Refraction refers to the change in behavior of a light wave as it transfers from one medium to another. Whereas sound waves tend to travel more quickly as they move from one medium into a denser medium, light waves tend to have the opposite, and this is refraction and it slows down the wave. And the degree to which that happens is described by n, which is the index of refraction. The index of refraction can be described as the speed of light over the velocity of the light in that particular medium. And notice that as the velocity in the medium slows down, the index gets greater. And so a greater index of refraction means that that medium slows down light more than others. There are a few angles you should be aware of when you're dealing with refraction problems. Those are the angle of incidence, the angle at which the light actually hits the surface, the angle of reflection, which is when it bounces off of that surface, and the angle of refraction, which is when the light transfers into that particular material. And these are all different angles, but the interesting thing is that they're all defined relative to this normal vector. So the vector that is perpendicular to the surface is the angle that we use in order to calculate angles of incidence, reflection, and refraction. You should also know that the angle of reflection will always be the same as the angle of incidence, whereas the angle of refraction is defined by Snell's law, which says n1 times sine theta1 equals n2 times sine theta2. So in this case, n1 would be the air, the sine theta1 would be the angle of incidence, and n2 would be the glass, and the theta here would be based on the angle of refraction. So you'd use that as theta2 when you're doing Snell's law. Now one thing to keep in mind and just be aware of to make this a lot more intuitive is to realize that whenever light goes from a one medium to another and the second medium has a greater index of refraction, theta will always get smaller. So the angle will move in a way that makes it tighter, makes it closer to that normal vector. And those are the very important things to be aware of with refraction. And then we'll get into a discussion of some of the interesting components of what's going on with these changes in velocity and various other angles involved. To gain a better understanding of the index of refraction, it's good to look at what it is inversely proportional to. So we've just set up this little equation here, and this will show you all the relationships. Notice that we have the second index on top and n1, the first index on the bottom. But these will cross over, and we'll see a lot of inverse proportionality relationships. So the indices are inversely proportional to sine theta, 1 versus sine theta 2. That's described by Snell's law, which says n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. And remember that these angles are whatever two angles you're analyzing here. They're also inversely proportional to the velocities of light traveling through that particular medium. Now remember that the velocity of light is the frequency times the wavelength. And so the next question is, what is causing this change in light's velocity as it moves from one medium to another? What's happening is that you're seeing a change in the wavelength. So the frequency actually stays the same, but the wavelength of the light gets shorter, and that is what serves to slow down the speed of light as it moves from, say, the air into glass or water or some other material. So recognize that index of refraction is inversely proportional to the angles that you're examining, as well as the velocity and the wavelength of the light as it transfers from one medium into another.